would like to briefly revisit this key word phrase, survival of the fittest, which once again Darwin never said. Herbert Spencer turned natural selection into survival of the fittest to motivate a social engineering agenda that he could claim would be founded on scientific principles. That's all crap, of course. And I'd like to explore again why that's crap and also to illuminate the difference between the phrase survival of the fittest and the phrase the fittest survive because it's a very important difference. In the fittest survive, that is the outcome of natural selection. The organism that is most adaptable to their environment, e.g. the fittest, has the highest survival probability. Nature does not know a priori who is fit and who is not. Adaptation and evolution is a statistical process based on random gene pairings combined with the survival rules of the ecosystems. And it takes thousands of generations of gene pairings to occur in a stable ecosystem to manifest what organism is the fittest. Social engineering wants to start by identifying who the fit are. Nature doesn't identify who the fit are. Nature finds out by experiment who the fit are. Big difference. Social engineering posits that because it's a scientific fact that the fit can be identified and the fit need to be protected so they can flourish. And in any given time in history, it's a small group of people, the elite, the little E people that we refer to, they are the ones that know who the fit are. The rest of us worthless worms don't know that. So social Darwinism is not a philosophy. It's a justification of a social policy well articulated by Rockefeller that the growth of a large business is merely a survival of the fittest. This is what nature does, and that's a scientific fact. So let's have governments that protect business before we have governments that protect the people. So what is social Darwinism in one slide? Well, first of all, it's a scientific fact, according to the social Darwinists, so it's legitimate. Individuals compete naturally. That may be true in nature. That's unlikely to be actually true for humans. The incompetent lose. Yes, of course, they should. And the strong survive. One must step out of the way for the stronger person to get ahead if you're weak, to quote Hitler badly. The strong win. This is the survival of the fittest. This is what Darwin said. No, he didn't. Darwin talked about natural selection and adaptation. It's these jokers that talk about survival of the fittest. Therefore, as I said earlier, government must not interfere unless the unfit are actually stealing from the fit. And the fit, again, are arbitrarily determined by the elite process, and they make this determination based on, it's a scientific fact. Hooray. And here we have our friend Spencer, who among many things said, the divine right of kings means the divine right of anyone who can get uppermost. Equating the rights of the king as appointed by God to the power of any individual that declares himself the most fit. This is nuts. This is one of the better quotes from Spencer that he uses to justify imperialism in the 19th century. Within the human species, nations are locked in a struggle for survival. Everywhere, civilized nations are supplanting barbarous nations. Advanced civilizations, obviously, has inherited inv invaluable traits from its ancestors. Therefore, natural order obligates powerful, civilized nations to appropriate the limited resources of the weak, because that's a scientific fact. 